Hi, welcome to the Ruckus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, today we're going to look at a new feature in 8061 ICX code, um, which adds option 60 and option 43 support onto the DHCP server. Uh, so basically the way this works is when a client machine sends a DHCP request to the, to the switch or router to the ICX, uh, it'll send it with an option 60 marked as um, a manufacturer type, right? So, for example, a ruckus access point will uh, send a, um, a VCI or a vendor class identifier uh, as ruckus CPE. Um, and so when, when the DHCP server receives that request, it sets an option 43 to tell that ruckus access point who its controller is so where its smart zone or virtual smart zone or or zone director is um, so that it can go out and and find that uh, controller if it's not on the same subnet right so if the controller is a, a across vlans on a different subnet or you know across the internet it needs to know what its controller's ip is and so we would use option 60 and option 43 to do that so let's have a look at uh, the commands to make that happen so here we are on my 7150 and uh, so on the 7150 here i have two different vlans uh, and those two vlans uh, are uh, 192.168.1.0 uh, and then uh, 192.168.2.0. So the DHCP scope or, or where the clients are going to go is on this 192.168.2 uh, subnet, right? So we will, as usual, create our, our DHCP pool. So config t ip DHCP dash server pool. Uh, give it a name, we'll call it option demo, uh, and then we configure that. So the network we want to use is uh, 192.168.2.0 with a class C mask. Um, we need to exclude our router's address out of that. Otherwise, it'll it'll give out 192.168.2.1 as its first address, which will be a duplicate address with the router itself. So we don't want that to happen. So we do excluded address. Now we could do multiple addresses here, but I only have one uh, device that I want to exclude at the moment, which is us. Uh, we are also going to set a, a um, default gateway. Uh, so DHCP default router 192. 168.2.1, so it's going to give that out to the DHCP clients as their default gateway. Uh, and then lastly, we're just going to deploy the scope. Okay, so if I do a show IP DHCP server summary, it tells me that I have a deployed scope uh, and I have zero active leases. So no one has got a lease yet. Um, and uh, so then what I'm going to do is do a debug IP DHCP underscore server and uh, we're going to watch when a DHCP request comes in from a ruckus access point uh, we want to see what that looks like, what its option 60 is set to so that we can um, set it, set, set our option 60 to exactly the same thing. It has to be exact uh, in order for it to work. So we'll plug in my access point here, let it boot up, and then let it make a DHCP request. And we should see that um, the VCI or the vendor class identifier in the DHCP request packet. And so then we'll know what to set our vendor class to um, and then set the option 43 to go with that. So, OK, so uh, we see the uh, request come in, right? So. It's um, it's right here. Option 60 is set to Ruckus CPE. So when we enter this, we need to put it in double quotes because there's a space here. But uh, it has to be entered exactly like this in the same, uh, you know, with the capital R and the capital CPE uh, in double quotes. And so here it's saying option 60 is configured no, right? So option 60 is not configured at this point. So it's not going to send out um, the option 43 to go with it. Okay, so um, 
what we'll do is we'll turn off that debug first. Okay, and so so that device did get an IP address from the DHCP server, but it just doesn't. It didn't have the option 43 set to to tell it who its uh, controller is. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our DHCP scope, uh, IP DHCP server pool option demo. Okay, and then what we're going to do is set um, vendor dash class um, ASCII. Now you could set it hex here as well, but we are not going to do that. Um, and so then in double quotes, exactly as we saw that in the pack uh, in the in the incoming DHCP request, we're going to set it like so. Um, now you you certainly could do this for other vendors, right? If it's an other kind of access point or whatever the case, but in this case we're setting it to to Ruckus, uh, and so all Ruckus access points are going to have Ruckus CPE as their vendor class identifier. Oh, sorry, typo. Okay, then. Uh, what we do is we set our option 43. So option 43, again, you know, this could be hex or ASCII here, but we're going to do ASCII uh, and then who your controller is. So 192.168.1. I don't know, uh, 98. Uh, and you could set multiple. So we could do 192.168.1.99, uh, for example. Right, and then lastly, because we change our scope, we redeploy it. Okay, so uh, if I do a show run, if I look at my DHCP scope, I now have my pool created, um, the uh, the network that I want it to uh, to advertise DHCP addresses from, what the default gateway is, what the excluded address is, um, and then I have this vendor class. So if it sees a DHCP request from something uh, with a um, a vendor class identifier as Ruckus CPE, it will send an option 43 of uh, 192.168.1.98 and 1.99. Uh, and then lastly, it's deployed. So uh, we'll turn debug back on here. And then um, we will have a look and see if it's changed. Uh, from from the previous. So we see a uh, DHCP request come in, um, and uh, so uh, it's it's received Ruckus CPE um, option sixty configured yes, um, and then so we added the the uh, the. VSI. So we, we sent 192.168.1.98 and 192.168.1.99 as an option 43 uh, when we sent out that request. So that is now passed, right? Previously it would have shown up as failed, uh, or it would be failed if the if the uh, VCI we received is something different, right? So if it was like a you know a phone or something that wasn't showing up with a VCI as Ruckus CPE, it would show as failed there under validation. But because this one is correct and it's exactly it matches exactly, then it sent out those um, those addresses to it and it says passed. So that's it. Easy uh, feature to configure, but certainly saves you a lot of time, especially if you're deploying multiple access points. Um, rather than having to, you know, SSH into the access points and set the controller ID, you can have it do it through DHCP automatically. And if your controller addresses update, you just need to change the DHCP pool rather than having to go to uh, the APs and do it that way. All right. So um, hope this was helpful. Thanks for joining and we'll see you again. Take care.